I appreciate everybody hopping on here. I appreciate your, uh, you know, support, obviously, throughout the season, a difficult season. I appreciate the job that you guys all have um, and, and continue to be hopeful that that you'll you'll share our message. You'll share you know, who we are to to our fans, uh, that we continue to to grow um, by our efforts on the field. Uh, excited to talk about our staff uh, today. You know, it's, it's I would say 95 percent uh, complete. I uh, spent a lot of time uh, going through um, multiple candidates at each position, met some amazing people, had conversations with some amazing people and coaches, um, you know, learned a lot throughout this process to get here um, and, and really excited about where this, this is going to go, uh, excited about where this is going to go. Uh, with my my relationship with Ran, uh, the relationship with our coaching staff and the personnel department, you know, so this is a it's a cool time to be able to to discuss those um, men and women on our staff um, and, and help you um, kind of figure out who they are. Teresa. Struggling with the Zoom, Teresa. Teresa, are you there? I see her. No glamour shot. Okay, uh, Jim Watt. Okay, Mike, uh, if you could maybe speak specifically about uh, the search at offensive coordinator and why Tim, Coley, Tim Kelly ended up ultimately being the right person for the job. Yeah, I think it's the, the right the right fit uh, for us at this time. It's it's the it's the perfect fit. Um, met with some really really good candidates. Um, one that that we were able to bring on here and our staff um, to to help assist and, and support Tim and our offense and, and coach our quarterbacks and our passing game coordinator. But yeah, I think what what Tim ultimately was able to do was be able to provide. Um, some familiarity and, and some carryover uh, to, to what we were doing, because I don't think everything's broken. I don't I don't believe that. Uh, but then also be able to, you know, add some some things that, um, you know, can really help us and take advantage of of some opportunities. Um, I've seen him, you know, call games uh, in this league uh, against us. Uh, felt like he has had a great feel for, for the game. You know, going back to even last year, um, playing with a rookie quarterback and not having much success against us at at their place, being able to to shift gears and, and get into empty almost exclusively, and you know, give them a chance to to get back in that football game, and um, you know, we were able to win. But you know, I think his his feel, um, his energy, his leadership, you know, all things that that came out uh, throughout this process of multiple meetings with him and, and other candidates. Uh, Terry. Should have went in person. Uh, Teron. What's up, Coach? Uh, my question is in regards to the, the collaboration side of things. Like, How do you see everything working as far as Charles London as past game coordinator with, with Pat O'Hara in his role, as well as Tim Kelly in his, in his and your uh, addition as well? Well, I mean, I think all that is, um, you know, we, we have to work through those types of things. I think that, you know, the one thing that I really appreciated from where Charles has been is having been with Tim and then gone and done some stuff on his own and, and bringing some of the, what he's learned from Chicago, his time in Chicago, which, um, what was valuable, uh, his work in Atlanta, which is a valuable, uh, and so, you know, his number one priority is, is going to be, uh, you know, coaching the quarterbacks and then the pass game coordinator, you know, I think that that's, that's an assist role and that's, you know, providing ideas and support and, um, you know, helping, helping Tim and everybody involved. Uh, work through the the, the weekly game plan and, and how we want to start off the spring and what we want to do and and how we want to install things and maybe how we change the terminology 
um, because I think that that's also important. I think you know, some of this stuff is going to be um, consistent, but there'll be a lot that will force us all to, to learn and to grow. And, and I think that that's, that's probably an important time for, for all of that, whether it's the terminology, the, the runs are the runs, the plays are the plays, but you know, how we're calling things, how we're teaching things, how, how we're uh, putting things into certain buckets. You know, those are all things that'll probably change with, with Tim uh, and, and Charles and, you know, and, and my input as well. Uh, let's try Terry again. Mike, can you talk a little bit about, I guess, the thought of, you know, the hiring Tim in-house versus maybe hiring an offensive coordinator from the outside who might bring in different ideas and a, and a different system? Well, I, you know, have, you know, I'm confident that there will be new ideas, new, um, you know, concepts. You know, again, there's, there's a lot of things that you can, can invest your time with. And, um, you know, we're, we're fairly certain that, you know, where we've invested a lot of our time is, you know, been in one particular system. I, I know that that'll, that'll change in the spring. I think this will be a great time to, you know, figure out, you know, how much you want to invest in, in some of these other schemes and these ideas. You know, you have to, every offense and every defense, everybody has to have an identity. Um, which is critical, you know, things that you're going to be able to do and then have, have plays off of it. So, you know, in my interactions and in my meetings with, with Tim, I'm very comfortable that there will be, you know, continue to do the things that we do well, the things that we uh, feel like we do well, that we want to continue and enhance, and then, you know, bring in new ideas that, that he has, that, that, that Arthur, or excuse me, that Charles has, or even um, other, other guys on our staff. Uh, I've got Teresa's question here. Um, what do you like about Lori and what she can bring to the defense? Well, I, I thought her knowledge was was excellent. I enjoyed our meetings um, that we were able to have at the Senior Bowl. Um, you know, she she's done it. She's done it. She's got experience in this league and, um, you know, excited to be able to bring on somebody that's, you know, worked with a lot of great players and been around great defenses in Tampa. Um, so that I, you know, and I know that, you know, she'll pr primarily start out working with the outside linebackers. Uh, I think that, that her and Ryan Crow will, uh, make a great team and, and he'll help her, uh, as she transitions to, uh, to working with the outside linebackers. Uh, Corey Curtis. Sorry, sorry, coach. Uh, Buck. Okay. Yeah, Mike. Uh, with with the coordinator hires, I mean, with, with as often as you guys have gone internal, how important is institutional knowledge for you when it comes to these kind of things? Well, I, you know, the, the whole idea, you know, what I mean, is, is what I know and what I believe in, and it's more importantly what I believe in. And if I didn't think that we had the, the right people here, um you know, we would try to go and, 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 and get somebody else. You know, I think we hire really good people. I mean, you see that from, from other opportunities that we've had uh, in the five years that we've been here, um, putting together a great staff that I believe in, that'll teach, develop, and, you know, inspire our players through, through making a connection with them. And you, you can see that, uh, you know, I have to identify – men and women that I think can continue to grow, have upward mobility. Um, and if they, you know, fit what I'm looking for and, you know, they, they are the right person for the job, well then, you know, I'll do my best to, you know, put them in those positions. Let's try Corey again. Or not. Um, Paul Carthy. Thanks. Hey, Mike, um, can, you, can you talk us through a little bit what Tim's role was as passing game coordinator last year? The times we were out there, we saw him during individual, often with the tight ends only. And, and we'd like to know, I think, a, little, a bit more about what he, he did when we weren't there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, they, I had asked him to, you know, I don't, I don't want him standing there holding a clipboard, uh, charting passes. So, 
you know, I asked him to, to focus and, and assist with the tight ends uh, at, at practice or an individual being at your set of hands. I like everybody that's out there to be working, uh, doing something to, to help the football team or the players. Um, yeah, you know, and then there were, you know, his, his, you know, outside of the time of practice, it was, you know, a lot of uh, preparation in, in advance. And I think he would come into to Todd and be able to, to meet with me and say, hey, here's what, you know, this is what we can expect. Um, you know, he was able to work ahead. You know, he wasn't focusing on, you know, necessarily calling the game. I, I think he was you know, helped put together the, the first and second down uh, passing game and would communicate with Todd, look through the third down, present that, you know, and, and then ultimately, um, you know, we go in with a game plan and then, you know, it has to get executed and, and, and it has to, you know, and somebody's got to call it. So, you know, it wasn't like when it was a pass, um, you know, it, it was, it was Tim's responsibility. Tim, Tim was here to, you know, to support the offense and to provide, uh, you know, working knowledge of, of the defense and to be able to, to, to help with the first and second down installation, third down, you know, and then worked with, with Todd as, as well as myself in the red zone. Uh, Joe Rexford. So following up on that, Mike, um, so with Charles then, it, would – that part of his job be the same in addition to coaching quarterbacks or is it a totally different role that's primarily focused on quarterbacks well i mean it's it's going to you know he he won't be able to probably do as much going forward joe um with, with the responsibility of the quarterbacks um you know i, I see him you know bring, bringing this, the ideas that that he had and uh when we met um and communicating and, and, and helping us put together the best plan uh, in the spring. And then ultimately uh, helping, helping Tim as we go through training camp and then, you know, into the season. So, you know, there's, um, you know, there's some, one person has to, has to make sure that they're, they're leading the offense and, um, you know, that'll be Tim, um, but, but making sure that, that everybody's voice is, is heard and then we go in with a game plan and then we have to execute it and we, and we have to make sure that we're calling a, a sound football game. Uh, Steve Lehman. Mike, two, two quick ones within one here. Number one, everybody's speculating on how much the offense should or should not change. How much would you like to see the offense change from what it was with, with this new cast and crew? And you're shuffling a lot of pieces there on offense. Is there a value to having sort of fresh eyes and new spots as they take on these new roles? Um, you know, I'd like our offense to, to be, um, you know, there's things that I believe in. I think that, you know, you, you have to be able to be efficient throwing the football and, and, and we weren't as efficient as we needed to be. You know, we turned it over too many times. I think you have to take care of the football. I think you have to you know, play with a physical style, whether that's, throwing the football and you got guys that are cleaning out the pocket. You know, I believe in mixing tempos, um, you know, having the ability to um, play with different personnel groups and, and really finding out what, our, what, what we have available, you know, what we're able to add to the roster and being creative uh, with who we have uh, and, and not just having guys that are in there when we throw the football or having guys in there when we run the football. I think looking for, speed, looking for uh, versatility. Those are things that, that I've talked to, to Rand about and him and I will continue to have conversations about that is making sure that we're, we're doing our best to, to hire versatile coaches and, and players that can you know, have an element of speed and playmaking ability, but also some versatility. So uh, I hope that we have, I know that we have the flexibility uh, that, that when we complete this roster, uh, you know, we'll be able to going a bunch of different directions from different personnel groups and getting in the same formations and you know, doing ultimately what our players uh, do best and what they can handle. Uh, Nick? Obviously, you mentioned just some moving pieces around. Um, I mean, some some of these, I you know, I mean, I don't know what you meant specifically, I, but you can ask the second question that you had, Steve, sorry. 
Yeah, just, I mean, to, to have Pat in a little different role or moving Tony from running backs to tight ends, et cetera. I mean, does it help to have a guy in a new role and, and coach maybe slightly differently or bring new eyes to a situation? Is that kind of the idea behind those moving pieces? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just, you know, what, what the thought process was there was that, you know, looking for, um, for, for, people to be able to have some, some growth opportunities when, when I recognized it and, um, you know, being able to, to excel at certain different roles um, and, and help the football team where I think is best. And, and I think that, you know, where we're at right now is gonna, gonna do that. Uh, Nick? Hey Mike, you brought up Ran a couple of times there. Just how much were you able to lean on him throughout this search process and just how have the first couple of weeks of collaboration between the two of y'all gone? Well, I, since I've been here, that, you know, I mean, I think that there's, um, as, as I work through the, the coaching staff, I've, you know, floated some ideas through them and we've had conversations, you know, we, we talk extensively. So um, it was really great to get down to the senior bowl. It, it was really cool to get down there and work through the interview process and have him and I both be a part of that and, and talk with, um, all those prospects, watch them practice, watch practice together, share share comments and a vision uh, for, you know, for what we want to do with the football team. And that'll continue um, with, with his staff and, and the coaching staff as, as we look at free agencies and or free agents and then on into the draft. Uh, Chris Harris. Hey, Mike, I'm curious, you mentioned about uh, Charles and talking to him for the, the OC job. What, what was it about him that made you want him, wanted him to be a part of the organization and of your team, regardless of the role? Well, I, just, I gen really just enjoyed the, the interview. It really did. Um, you know, I think going down to the Senior Bowl and watching his um, demeanor and his presence on, on the field and his interactions, um, you know, with those players down there was, was really somebody that I wanted to, you know, try to be a part of our staff. Uh, Gentry? Yeah, Mike, with uh, with Tim already on staff last season, did, did you consider expanding his role in this way previously, either before the season, during it at some point? And, and a couple of years ago, did you make an attempt to uh, to kind of reach out and talk to him for that then? Well, I mean, you know, there, there was, you know, I have to make decisions, Gentry, and I don't know if, you know, during the season, uh, anything really would have mattered. Um, I, I really don't. I, mean, I think that um, what, what I'm focused on um, is where we go, you know, from here, where, where we're able to grow, where we're able to um, find a way to protect our, our quarterback, find a way to to continue to drive the football, have less non-efficient plays and runs and, and be able to convert third downs, score touchdowns, get to the red zone more often. I stand behind what we do in the red zone. We just got to get down there more often. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've met with Tim. Um, you know, he was under contract in, in Houston. So, um, you know, when we were able to add him, you know, we, we added him in, in some capacity. Uh, Jared Stillman. Hey, Mike, what does today's news mean for uh, Ryan? Well, I don't, I don't think anything. I mean, I talked to Ryan. I, I let him know uh, what, what, you know, which direction that we were headed. Uh, he, he, I don't want to speak for him. He seemed excited, um, you know, about what we were, were going to do and about who we were doing it with. Um, but, but again, Rand and I are evaluating the entire um, roster, you know, the players that are under contract, the players that are going to be potential free agents here pretty soon. So, um, you know, Ryan's in here every day um, and, and he's, you know, excited about where things are headed. So, you know, I, other than that, I don't know what to tell you other than being able to say, um, you know, we, we've got to get ready here to add a lot of pieces uh, and find ways to do that. Uh, Teron? I was going to ask that question about Tannehill, but I, I'll shift it back to, to Tim Kelly. You mentioned how you feel 
not everything was broken and you want some of the carryover, what are some of the things that make you feel that things can be different with Tim Kelly as, as the play caller? What, what are things that I think can be different or? Right. Like what, what do you, how do you feel he can do the job differently? Like what gives you the confidence that he can come in and, and have this offense function the way that you want it to? Wow, man, we go through an extensive uh, interview process, um, hear how he would do things, hear, hear what he liked, hear, hear what he you know, would like to change. Um, going forward, um, you know, his, his history as a play caller, his history working with um, different schemes, like I said, in, in Houston and being able to have a great feel for the game, uh, be, being able to go work with, with Charles and the rest of our offensive staff, uh, bringing some energy um, and, and taking the guys that, that are going to be here, especially some of these young guys that really started to come on and build a system for them and help them uh, learn, get lined up, know what to do, and be able to play fast and aggressive. And uh, that, that's the most important thing. Uh, Sam? Uh, hey, Mike. Uh, j you mentioned thinking that moving Tim's role earlier into the season wouldn't have mattered much. I'm just curious if you could elaborate on that and why you felt like uh, shifting his responsibilities doesn't help you moving forward or with the, the current move. Yeah, I think really, Sam, and I, and I appreciate everybody's um, question, and I appreciate the, uh, you know, the fact that you guys would show up here to, to, to cover this and, and support our staff. I, you know, you know, my focus is, is solely on this football team moving forward, uh, the staff that we have in place, the people that are here, um, working with Rand and his staff, communicating with our players, finding which ones we're going to bring back and potential free agents and who we're going to add and, and, and putting together a, a great um, you know, scheme and playbook and how we want to install and, you know, how we can make it player friendly and you know, ideas on teaching, you know, not about where we were in, you know, October or you know, the state of the team uh, in December and what we went through then. Uh, just a couple more, uh, Jim. And Mike, you mentioned your 95 staff's 95 percent complete. Are you down to just running backs coach? And maybe where are you in that process? Well, that's still ongoing. You know, there's a few um, individuals that are that are interviewing for for other jobs uh, that I've I've talked to, and um, you know, we'll kind of see where that goes, and you know, try to find the the best person uh, that that can uh, that can help us uh, uh, in that position. Uh, Joe Rexford. Uh, moving on from Keith, Mike, and then promoting Jason, what is, uh, I guess what, what is that comment on the offensive line coaching and what? why did you make that move? Why did I pr promote Jason? Well, both moves, you know, uh, yeah, no, moving I mean, on from I'm Keith. I'm not going to touch on um, the people that aren't here. I uh, appreciate what they did. Um, you know, you, you realize that, you know, just as the same, that we want to develop uh, players, uh, part of our, you know, Challenge is developing players and understanding that they, who they are when they get here, isn't necessarily what their their finished product is. And um, you know, we don't care how you get here; we just care what you do when you're here. And you know, I think Jason uh, is a great example of that. You know, fulfilled a role and, and was able to um, build a strong connection with the players. He was a great teacher. He's worked in multiple schemes. He was a head coach. Um, and, and it was it was probably one of the best interviews that I've had in in, in five years and, and, and interviewing uh, different coaches. And so uh, I'm extremely happy and excited to, to be able to give him this opportunity. Uh, I know that Sully will will support him as well as we move forward with, you know, that 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 group and that unit that that has to to get better. And it starts by. You know, finding some guys that 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 can come in and, and develop and, and and be coached. 
last two. Uh, Paul? Two pronged, if I may, Mike. Uh, the analyst titles for for Luke and Pat. Does that signal anything of a, of a new direction or approach for how you're looking at things? Well, just continuing to try to, um, you, you know, want these guys to be a part of our offense, and you know, not not having a, a position group uh, per se is going to allow them to, um, you know, do some of that pre advanced work. Um, but but also help and assist uh, throughout our offense. And, and, and those guys have, have been here um, since I got here. Uh, and, and so I want them to, to be able to help us in, in a multiple ways and uh, confident that they'll be able to do that. Understand what you said about having good people in-house at the start. But it seems like more than a coincidence that when you do go outside for Tim or for Charles, that they're guys that you've worked with before. And it, it can seem rather insular that you're reluctant to, to bring in somebody that you're not connected to. You have an affinity, as most people do, for, for people you're familiar with? Well, I mean, I've enjoyed all the, the interviews that we've had. And I know, you know, I think that that's, um, that, that's important. You know, I don't think that that's certainly the, the barometer in which we make decisions. I don't want to do that. I, I think that that's, um, you know, we, we've had numerous coaches here that have been, that I've been able to work with. Um, you know, I think as a head coach, I, I come up with a bunch of ideas, you know, hey, we should do this or, hey, we should do that. And, um, you know, I'm confident that, that the coaches that we have here have and will continue to tell me, you know, that's, that's too much. That's, that's not going to work. That's, you know, that's too much for the players or, you know, Hey, that's a great idea. And, and I do think that that's, that's important, whether that I knew them previously or they came in here, um, you know, from somewhere else and you try to empower everyone to you know, hire great people and empower them to do their job and, and be able to say, you know, coach, that's, that's not what's best for the players. So, um, I think we have a great staff. I think we have great teachers we have to continue to develop and, uh, you know, evaluate and, and bring in, you know, great people uh, and, and then see, see where the talent level takes us and be able to make decisions on what we want to do uh, schematically in, in offense and defense and special teams. Uh, Steve Lehman, last one. Mike, I think the one guy we hadn't mentioned through this whole thing was Chris Harris on defense. How excited are you that that was able to work itself out and what he might be able to do in the defensive pass game coordinator role to assist Shane? Uh, you know, I mean, continue to, um, you know, Chris, Chris did a fantastic job. So did, so did Scott Booker. And, and uh, you know, Scott make it, made it a difficult decision. And, and, I, and I really respected uh, his growth and his confidence as he's continued to grow and he'll continue to coach our safety, which he's done a fantastic job at. Um, you know, we were excited to be able to add Chris. I mean, you see he's had a lot of interest from, from other places and, you know, we'll support him, you know, as he, he goes down to that, uh, that road and his ultimate goals. But I loved his demeanor. I loved his ability to teach and, you know, we'll, we'll add some, some ideas and, and help us, um, you know, in what we've already done and, and figure out what's too much and, you know, making making some suggestions or, or tweaks to stuff that we already do. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the time. Thanks a I lot, Mike. We appreciate it. Appreciate Thanks, you guys. Coach.